USC receiver Jordan Addison is a highlight reel type of receiver. He runs great. LSU's Jay Ward kind of flew under the radar. LSU had some issues, but don't tell Jay Ward that. He was a flat out stud. Very versatile. Now he can play corner. He could probably play safety a little bit too. I'm not just necessarily sure about Big Nickel, but he is very, very versatile. Tackling, he's always there. He prevented the big play. Run support absolutely willing to go in there and stick his nose in on run support balance eh, needs some work there he can shed blocks a little bit but he wasn't necessarily consistent in that department Kyle Duggar kind of the same way especially early in his career upside for Jay Ward absolutely there because he is so versatile because he can do a lot of different things needs to work on that balance a little bit to become a star in the NFL got himself on NFL radars because of his coverage ability. It certainly didn't hurt that his 2022 season was spent trying to lock down Jordan Addison in practice. At 5'10", 182, he could stand to add a few pounds, but he plays much bigger in coverage than his listed measurables. Also helping, he ran a 4.47 at the combine. His ability to react with the ball in the air is what makes him an intriguing prospect, and he has the athleticism and fluidity to turn and run with any wide receiver. He does need to improve as a tackler and run support, and he can be a bit too handsy at the top of routes, which will be flagged at the next level. While his coverage skills will make him an attractive option for NFL teams, he'll need to get stronger to match up against wide receivers in the league. LSU's Jay Ward kind of flew under the radar. LSU had some issues, but don't tell Jay Ward that. He was a flat out stud, very versatile. Now he can play corner. He could probably play safety a little bit too. I'm not just necessarily sure about Big Nickel, but he is very, very versatile. Tackling, he's always there. He prevented the big play. Run support, absolutely willing to go in there and stick his nose in on run support. Balance, eh, needs some work there. He can shed blocks a little bit, but he wasn't necessarily consistent in that department. Kyle Duggar, kind of the same way, especially early in his career. Upside for Jay Ward, absolutely there because he is so versatile, because he can do a lot of different things needs to work on that balance a little bit to become a star in the NFL. You're talking about a monster. You're talking about Jacqueline Roy. He could play every single down on both sides of the ball. That's how well-tuned this guy was with the LSU Tigers. 6'4", 297, agility, experience, checks every single box from an athleticism perspective. He's a little inconsistent, didn't necessarily do it all for LSU. Pass rushing situations, not necessarily where he needs to be. Gets a little stiff, gets a little run over sometimes. You're talking about a guy like Dalvin Tomlinson. Dalvin Tomlinson was a star at Alabama. He's a star at the NFL level now. Going to get paid. Jacqueline's got to get a little bit more experience, but that's the kind of player he can be at the pro level. BYU quarterback Jaron Hall is one of the more interesting quarterback prospects in this year's draft. He's a two-year starter for BYU, and he exemplified a lot of improvement from his first year starting to his second year, as well as the ability to be a part of a rushing attack for any team. However, there are some weaknesses in his game. He does struggle sometimes at consistently being accurate at all three levels throwing the football, and I do think there's some questions too as far as how he will be able to transition into the NFL game, being a little bit undersized as well. My comp for him, it's Brock Purdy, back when he was coming out of Iowa State, not what we saw this past year for the San Francisco 49ers. There are some questions about Purdy in regards to his size, his arm strength, everything else, but both these quarterbacks have experience, they have high football IQs, and again, they're also able to be a part of the rushing attack. So for Jaron Hall, if he finds the right situation and circumstance, he could eventually find his way not only to be a capable backup, but maybe one day starting some games and having some su success, much like we saw from Brock Purdy. All right, let's talk running backs here. Dwayne McBride out of University of Alabama, Birmingham, came in at 215. What are the more consistent players in all of college football uh, last year? Gave you seven yards carrying the ball between the tackles. Uh, when you see him play, when you think about him, this is the guy that thumps between the tackles. He's not going to rip off 70 or 80 yard touchdowns, but between the tackles, he'll give you that consistent uh, seven yard average. To be successful in the NFL, nobody questions his durability or his ability to run and pick up those tough yards. There's two things he's going to have to get better at. Number one is receiving. He's going to have to come out of the backfield and get better at catching the football. I think the other thing is 
uh, he's going to have to create some more big plays. He's probably not an every down back, but I think he can come in and make a contribution day one to most NFL teams. I would compare him uh, to Isaiah Crowell, uh, the 2014 NFL draft pick. Andre Carter, the linebacker at Army up at West Point, one of my favorite players in this year's draft. Comes into the draft at 6'7", 270-pound uh, linebacker. You don't see uh, those type of measurables very often. In fact, I haven't seen it in the last seven or eight years. Uh, high motor guy, high intensity, uh, high IQ, both on the football field and off. This is a leader uh, up at West Point, accomplished everything you could ask. Uh, of a football player. Certainly, he's going to be a first round draft pick. We'll see where he lands. I think he could land somewhere in that uh, 11 to 14 range, depending on how things shake up and, and the trades that are made. Kind of reminds me of Jason Taylor uh, coming out of the 1997 draft. He's that athletic. Uh, I think he has a bright future, and I think he's best suited for one of those attacking defenses as a rush linebacker in that 3 4 scheme. Ivy Pace Jr., linebacker out of Cincinnati, reminds me a lot of David Long. Pace is undersized, even by today's off-ball linebacker standards, measuring 5'10 and weighing 231 in the combine. That said, don't let the smallish package fool you. Pace is looking to hit something, anything, and it's usually around the line of scrimmage. He's at his best coming downhill, he can blitz from anywhere, and more than that, he consistently gets home. He's a wrap-up tackler who is always around the ball, and he has the juice to play sideline to sideline. He consistently plays with power and leverage and disengages from blocks to make plays in the run game. And it's that twitch, which is all over the tape, along with a compact frame that makes him an asset as a between the tackles pass rusher too. Despite his hair and fire approach to playing the run, Pace can be stiff at times when moving laterally, and he's not asked to do too much in pass coverage. Malik Knowles, wide receiver out of Kansas State, has a lot of Tyree Cleveland in his game. Knowles is a kick return specialist who has two career kick return touchdowns. He's incredibly raw as a wide receiver and a route runner, but all you have to do is get the ball in his hands and let him do the rest. He excels in yards after the catch, consistently breaks tackles in space, and he can take a quick slant to the house like it's routine. The same holds for quick screens and end arounds. He has a long way to go when it comes to running the entire route tree though, but his explosiveness is undeniable. Put another way, Knowles has game-changing abilities, plus enough growth potential that it makes him an intriguing prospect for teams looking for a day three to a quick fix in the return game, as well as a longer-term receiving project who could pay big dividends down the road.